analytical solution of double stop matching set. In the previous video, we have seen how to design a double stop matching circuit by using a Smith chart. Now, in this video, we are going to study how to design such double stop matching circuit by using analytical technique or by using equations. At the beginning, we have Y load connected to the first terminal of the double stop tuning circuit. This Y load has real bar GL and imaginary bar PL. So Y load equals GL plus GBL. Here we have a parallel susceptance GB1 connected in parallel to Y load. So the total admittance at the input terminal of the double stop tuning circuit would be Y1 equals Y load plus GB1. Y load is GL plus GBL here plus GB1. So we can say that Y1, the input admittance, after adding the parallel susceptance GB1, equals GL plus G multiplied by BL plus B1. This input admittance will be transferred by a distance D to the point 2. At this point, the input admittance it would be Y2. Y2 here it can be determined uh, by simple analytical form as Y input equals Y naught plus Y1 plus G Y naught 10 beta D over Y naught plus G Y1 10 beta D and by using Y1 as G1 uh, sorry GL plus G multiplied by BL plus B1 so this Y1 plus G Y naught 10 beta D and we are going to use letter T as a replacement for 10 beta D so this is G Y naught 10 beta D over Y naught plus G Y 1 10 beta D so G Y 1 10 beta D could be J T multiplied by G L plus G B L plus G B 1 this is the input admittance just before the second step actually we are going to design the first set such that the input admittance just before the second stop has a real part equals Y0. This means that the real part of Y2 must equal Y0. It has an imaginary part, but the real part is Y0. So the real part of Y2 must equal Y0, where Y0 is 1 over Z. Uh, by taking the real part of this equation and equating it by Y naught, we can obtain the following second order equation. This second order equation is actually equation of GL, BL, and P1. In addition, we have 10 beta D, which occurs as T. Alright? Uh, we can solve this equation to determine GL 
or in other words we can solve this equation to determine the value of b1 so actually we have two solutions for this equation one if we are looking for gl and one if we are looking for b1 and in both cases this equation is second order equation let us start with solving for gl by solving the second order equation for gl here is gl squared plus b multiplied by gl plus c by solving this uh, we can solve it analytically as uh, minus b over 2 minus b over 2 plus or minus square root uh, b over 2 minus 4ab or 4, 4 is actually the solution of second order equation so the solution of this equation it can be represented in this form this actually minus b over 2 plus or minus square root this should be b over 2 squared minus a which is 1 multiplied by c which is this term and by taking uh, b over 2 as a common factor from the square root this can be square root 1 minus 4 a multiplied by c over b 4 uh, over b squared 4 multiplied by a which one multiplied by c which is this term over b which is y naught 1 plus t squared over t squared so this is 1 over b squared okay should be noted that the value of gl must be rare cannot be complex value because actually the admittance y l is g l which is real plus g b l which is the imaginary part so g l is pure real value this means that the argument of this square root must be greater than or equal one uh, sorry greater than or equal zero greater than or equal zero or in other words this term should be greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal one because if it is greater than one this would be negative and if this is negative this square root would be imaginary and this not allow because gl is pure real value So, the argument of this term is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to unity to satisfy that the value of GL is real value. And actually, the maximum value of this square root is 1. So, the minimum value of GL is 0, and the maximum value of GL when this 1 plus 1 it would be 2, it would be y naught multiplied by 1 plus t squared over t squared. And the minimum value when this 1 minus 1, this would be 0, and GL is 0. This means that the value of GL which satisfy the condition that the real part of Y2 equals Y0 must be greater than 0 and must be less than Y0 plus 1 plus T squared over T squared and because T squared here is actually 
10 beta d. So this one plus 10 squared beta d over 10 squared beta d. By taking this, 10 is sine squared over cosine squared. So 1 plus 10 squared is actually 1 over cosine squared. And this is sine squared over cosine squared. So we can say that this is actually y naught over sine squared beta d. This means that the allowable value for uh, the real part of the load admittance should be greater than zero and less than y naught over sine squared beta d, where d is the distance between the two stops. Actually, this condition is a condition which what is the allowed region for the load admittance that can be matched by this double stop unit. Or in other words, outside this region, if the value of GL is greater than Y naught over sine square beta D, we are going in the forbidden region. And in the forbidden region, we cannot match this one. So this actually is the analytical formula for the allowable region and the forbidden region is GL is greater than Y naught over sine squared beta D. <coughs> and as I said, this is a range on GL that can be matched for a given stop space. Alright? Okay. Now we have solved this equation for GL to determine the allowable range for GL. We can also solve this equation, but instead of solving for GL, we will solve it for B1. So by solving this equation for B1, and making B1 is the unknown, so in this case, by solving this equation for B1, we can find out B1 equals minus BL plus Y0 plus or minus square root 1 plus b squared g l y naught minus g l squared t squared over this actually the two acceptable solution the two acceptable solutions for the first stop such that the input admittance just before the second stop would equal or would have a real bar equals y naught. So this is the required shunt acceptance which should be added to y load such that the input admittance just before the second stop would have a real bar equals y naught. And as we have seen in uh, Smith chart solution we have two solutions also in the analytical solution we have two solutions once we determine the value of v1 we can go with this value of v1 in the original equation of y2 the input admittance after a distance d and substitute for the value of v1 here by substituting for the value of v1 we can find y2 as a real part uh, plus imaginary part. Actually, the real part it would be y0. Because actually, we have started with enforcing the boundary condition that the real part is y0. But the imaginary part would be plus uh, jb2. In this case, we are going to add minus jb2 to such plus gb2 such that the total admittance after the second uh, stop would be y0 so the second stop acceptance can be found from the negative of the imaginary bar of y2 we after calculating the value of b1 we are going to substitute in this equation to obtain 
real part and imaginary part. The real part would be y not the imaginary part. We are going to take its negative value to determine the value of v not if v two. And because we have two values for v one, we have corresponding two values for v two. So, for example, for the positive sign here, we have the positive sign here. And uh, for the negative sign here, we have the negative sign. So, this is the sequence of the second stop, such that the total admittance after the second stop it would be y naught. Okay? Now, after determining the value of v1 and v2, to design this matching stops which has acceptance b1 and b2 if we are going to use open set the stop the length of the stop over lambda naught would be determined as 1 over 2 by 10 minus 1 the value of the required subsistence over y naught if we are designing the stops with short set stop the length of short set stop over lambda would be minus 1 over 2 by 10 minus 1 y naught over b. If the value here is obtained as negative value, we add lambda over 2 to this negative value to obtain the positive length of the stop. This is how to determine the length of the stop according to the required value of the susceptance b1 and b2. After determining b1 and b2, we obtain the range of the stops. After determining the range of the stops, we have already completed the design of the double stop tuning circuit. This is how to design the double, uh, double stop tuning circuit by using analytical technique. Okay? Or, right.